Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here. Here happens to be in my garage shop once again. And in this episode, we're going to talk about a couple of the locks on the ShopSmith Mark V. Um, I, I'm active on the ShopSmith forums and also on a uh, ShopSmith users group on Facebook. And a couple of comments came up this week about some of the effects of the locks on this machine. And I started to type a response and realized there's just too much to say. I'll say this in video form. Also, when I used my jointer this week for the first time since we finished it uh, this last week, I ran into a problem. So let's address that first, and then we'll go into some detail of these two locks. Now, I did do a video on the five-point safety check, the, the locks that I check every single time I use my Mark V. And I'll link to that right up here. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to check that out. But let me show you what happened on the jointer. So here's the issue I had with my jointer. I had the set square. I knew it was square. I made a few cuts. They were square. And then when I finished my work, they weren't square. So I came back to double check this. Sure enough, the fence was out of square. But how could that be? I had used a stop, and that's when it hit me. You know, this fence rail that's on this jointer is bolted on. There's a uh, basically a, a large machine screw here that passes through into a captured square nut. So there's no need for a wrench in the back. You just tighten that. And when I gave this a bit of a wiggle, it, <laughs> it was loose. So we need to take this off. And with a flat blade screwdriver, we can tighten that up. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's loose. There you go. So that should take care of that problem. So just goes to show me, as I knew from the beginning, even though the previous owner had been using this machine, they didn't do any alignment on it. So I need to double check everything. Now, one of the topics of discussion that came up on, I think, I think it was the ShopSmith Facebook group, was somebody had a dial indicator set up on their table saw, and as they tightened the headstock, the blade moved all over the place. And uh, I knew that from experience that that was what was going to happen. So let me set this up as a table saw, and let me show you what's happening. Okay, I'm hoping you'll be able to see this. I have taken a hex wrench and brought it into the miter gauge and locked it in place, touching the blade. So the table tilt is locked, the carriage is locked, the table height adjustment is locked, the quill was not locked, now the quill is locked, and now I'm going to tighten the headstock. I want you to watch between that blade and the wrench. Now I'm gonna loosen it, and now I'm gonna tighten it, and loosen, and tighten, and I'm going to loosen it, and I'm going to tighten it, and loosen, and tighten. Can you see that movement? There's a couple thousandths of movement right there. What's going on? The headstock is locked in place by two metal wedges, one located here and one on the opposite side of the headstock. When you turn this handle, you are rotating a threaded rod that pushes this wedge forward into the top of the way tube, while at the same time, it's pulling the other wedge to the top of this way tube. Now, if you think about what's happening there, if you were to take a wooden wedge and drive it in at the top, it would lift the headstock up. Now, I don't know if this was by design or if it was just uh, dumb luck, but when you think about this, when this headstock is loose and you're sliding it around on your way tubes, if that creates any wear at all, that wear is going to be in the top side of this hole in the casting. But yet when we tighten this, we're driving the wedge in, which lifts the headstock tight against the bottom of the way tube. So the wedges are pressed against the top. The headstock casting is lifted into contact with the bottom. Now, how tight do we tighten this? We talked about that in the other video, but it's still worth mentioning. You hand tighten this, 
And when it now would require a little more muscle, I go no more than a quarter turn. If you over tighten this, you run the risk of damaging the way tubes, or more importantly, or just as important, you can damage the threads in that softer metal component, that wedge. And uh, if you do that, you'll be in a situation where the headstock is locked in place and you can't rotate this and can't remove it. Now there's, <laughs> there's a way to deal with that, but we're not gonna do that today. Uh, the, the most important thing to remember is don't over tighten. But because of the way that tightens, as that locks, it lifts the headstock. So maybe you can see the headstock moving as I tighten it. So I remember the first time I observed that movement of the blade when locking and unlocking the headstock. I kind of freaked out a little bit. And I thought, how can it move that much and still be in alignment? And that's when I realized, hold on, when I'm aligning the machine, I do that with the headstock lock. I then adjust and align the table to that locked headstock. So as long as when I'm using the machine, as long as when the power's on, the headstock is locked to the way tubes, which it always is, I have no worries. It's only going to move when I loosen it, and that happens when the headstock is off. Okay, while I have this here, it's a good time to go ahead and lubricate that. Um, basically, what I want to lubricate is the threaded rods as they go into that wedge. There are a couple approaches to this. You could use a spray lubricant. You don't want to use WD-40. You don't want to use anything that gets gummy as it sets up. Um, and, and really, the old standby of just powdered graphite works great. The best time to apply this is when the headstock is open, when the motor is off, and you can work with no obstructions. But actually, I can apply it from outside the headstock, and it'll be better than it is today. With the headstock locked, I have access to at least some of the threads. I'll just dust a little bit of this graphite onto it, loosen it, tighten it, do it again. And that adds a little bit of lubricity. Do the same thing from the back side. Right now the headstock is loose, so the uh, threaded rod is recessed a little bit. Now tighten it, loosen it, put a little more in, tighten it, loosen it, and we're good to go. The other lock that came up in conversation this week was the carriage lock. Now on the Mark V Model 500, that is a lock just like the headstock lock, and it's located on the left side. But on the 510, 520, and the Mark 7, this lever is off to the right, and it's just a quarter turn lever. Now, when, when you go to lock this, it should be almost tight, and then that last inch or so of travel should require a little more oomph. And when that is locked, you should be able to push and tug on that carriage and have it not move. You can do that test in the drill press position just to be sure where you can get some, some real leverage on it. If it moves at all, then we're gonna tighten that on the back side here with a half inch socket wrench. So I'm gonna tighten this in, in quarter turn increments. Um, you'll notice the first thing that'll happen when I tighten this is it'll lift that lever up. Okay, once the lever gets all the way over here, I can go a quarter turn with my wrench and move that up. And then I can check it. So move the carriage along the way tubes, go to lock it, give it that last little oomph, and check. If it needs more, again, it'll appear that I'm loosening it over here. That lever will come up and then give that another quarter turn. Yes, it is possible to over tighten that. We don't want to ding and dent the tubes, um, but if it is too loose, it's that easy to make that adjustment. Likewise, if it's too tight, we can just rotate the opposite direction, taking that a quarter turn at a time. And I think we're good. So there's a couple easy peasy adjustments that you can do with your Shopsmith equipment. Um, all of these are in the owner's manual, so this is not rocket science by any means. 
but any one of those could cause problems if you've not paid attention. So double check all those. Again, if you haven't seen it, click on the link above to check out the five point safety check. And I'll uh, talk to you midweek for stumped Q&A should you have questions, comments, or cheap shots. Put them down below and I'll see you then. Make it a great day.